uh, my name is uh, Archan Vinayak. I'm a retired professor from Delhi, and I was, I'm a fellow of the Transnational Institute. Uh, now, authoritarian populism can be from above, it can be from below, and it can be from both directions. Um, when it is from above, uh, uh, it's really, of course, uh, from the state and from state power. And an authoritarian regime can still not be populist. Don't understand authoritarian populism as necessarily a state of affairs. You can understand it as a process whereby an authoritarian regime, and there'll be differences between different authoritarian regimes, some will want to actually move towards becoming more and more populist, and others, for example, a military dictatorship might not be interested in that. So you have authoritarian populism from above, which of course uh, is dangerous in various ways. Its rural connection, as many have pointed out, is that in rural areas, for material reasons, the values and all tend to be more traditional in various aspects, and that can form a basis of support for authoritarianism from uh, populism from above. But always remember that it also strives to have a much wider reach than just the agrarian section, and also in uh, the uh, urban area, and so on. Uh, with regard to authoritarianism from below, uh, which that's, for example, you can take an example, the uh, Le Pen and the uh, far-right party in France, which is seeking to propel itself in power by mobilizing uh, people on a basis of uh, their resentments, which are connected, if you like, to the realities of suffering that they have, both economic and psychological, uh, and therefore against many of the effects of what we call neoliberalism, but not against the structure of neoliberalism. And therefore, they seek uh, concessions within the uh, uh, existing neoliberal order, but all of them, Le Pen, for example, and others, are not just concerned with regard to uh, the economics dimension. They have a kind of focus of hostility towards some other. Uh, and uh, that as a basis for uh, developing a larger cultural ideological sense is about the whole nation. And that's why one of the strongest forms of authoritarian populism in these days, for various reasons, is authoritarian nationalism. Hmm. The last aspect in terms of from above and below, this of course is most frightening and dangerous because it means that you have a far right government in power. If it has a structure built over time of implantation in the pores of that particular civil society, then that is really frightening. And what I mean by being implanted in the pores of civil society is that they address all kinds of needs. In the Indian context, unfortunately, the BJP, the party, has a uh, recent existence of 15, 20, 30 years. But the force that is most importantly behind it, what is called the RSS, has a continuous existence for, uh, uh, for, for, for over 90 years and a massive implantation. And therefore, they have a transformative project to change the nature of society. And these kind of forces will have, of course, uh, fascist characteristics uh, in so many ways. And because of their implantation, it means that in many ways, the most important struggle to defeat them at the electoral level, fine. But in fact, the much more important struggle to defeat them is at the level of society itself. And that's a long-term struggle in situations where you have, in fact, both top and bottom as authoritarian populism.